All right, let's take a look at the examples in types of reasoning, inductive. Uh, example A says, a dot pattern is shown below. How many dots would there be in the fourth figure? And how many dots would there be in the sixth figure? Well, if we take a look at the pictures we have, uh, here we have one dot for place one. We have two dots for place two. I'm sorry, we have three dots for place two. We have six dots for place three. So what we're looking for is some kind of a pattern here so we can use inductive reasoning. We can take the, the specific examples we have and make sort of a general rule or a general statement. Now it looks to me like each number has a different number of rows. This number here, space one, has one row or one uh, column, I'm sorry, of dots. You could also think of it as one row. I guess it doesn't matter either way. Um, number two has two rows. And each successive row has one more dot in it, right? Three has three rows. So the fourth figure then would have four rows. It'd have one dot on top. And then we'd have two dots. And then we'd have three dots. And then we'd have four dots, right? So we can actually go along and just draw out the next two figures to figure out how many dots would be in the sixth figure. But maybe we can look at some, some kind of a pattern that would allow us to calculate them. If we go from 1 to 3 to 6 to 3, 6, 10, the difference here is 2. The difference here is 3. The difference here is 4. So that would mean that the difference here would be 5 to the fifth figure, right? So it should have 15. And then finally, the difference to the next figure should be 6, which would give us 21 for the sixth figure. So that tells us that the sixth figure has 21 dots. And we already counted that the fourth figure had 10 dots. All right, so example B. How many triangles would be in the tenth figure? All right, so we're definitely going to want to come up with a pattern here because it'd be a whole lot of triangles to count if we drove these, you know, sort of drew these out all the way to ten. Um, so figure one has one triangle on top and on the sides and on the bottom, all four ed or all four sides or all four edges of one square. Figure two has two squares, so we have two squares giving us two sets of two triangles and then two triangles on the end. Figure three has three squares. Definitely looks like it's all about the squares. Three squares, so it gives us three triangles on the top and three on the bottom and then one on each end. So figure ten would have ten squares and ten triangles on the top, ten more triangles on the bottom and then one on each end, right? So that tells us we'd have 10 plus 10 is 20 plus 1, 2. So figure 10 would have 22 triangles. Okay, example C. Example C says, look at the pattern 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. What is the 19th term in the pattern? All right, so the first number in the pattern is 2. In fact, let's, let's write out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Write out the numbers, the, sort of their places in the pattern, the first place, the second place, the third place, and so on. And then we'll put the actual values above it. So the first number in the pattern is 2. Next one's 4, 6. So obviously it's counting by even numbers, 8, 10, 12. But because it's counting by even numbers, every position in the series has a number above it that's 2 times itself. So the first position is 1 times 2, the second one's 2 times 2, and so forth. So that means that position dot, dot, dot 19 out here would be 2 times 19, which would be 38. So position 19 would be 38. And that was a lot easier than just drawing it out. We just took our specific examples, used a little inductive reasoning 
to make a general statement. The statement was that for each position, the number above it was two times itself.